Alex from Modern Homemaker and on today's episode I'll be showing you how I made this bucket handbag. I chose to make mine with a leather bottom and some cotton and linen blend fabric on the top. I'll be teaching you two ways to make this scrunch top, one with some bottom holes and the other one with gold plated rings. If you want to learn how I did this, just keep watching. To start this project, I'll be teaching you how to create the pattern piece so that you can make this bag the size that you like, using my measurements as a reference in case you want to make it the exact same size. The overall shape that we are looking for is this. Start by drawing a rectangle on the center of the paper. This will become the bottom of the bag. I made mine 14 cm by 21 cm. Then you'll make a bigger rectangle on each side by adding half of the width of the bottom on the length side and deciding how tall you want your bag to be. Mine ended up being 35 by 24 centimeters. What I mean by this, in my case I'll be adding 7 centimeters on each side since my bottom length was 14 centimeters and making it 26 centimeters tall. So I'll that's how tall I wanted it to be, so... If you want to make yours out of two materials like I did, you want to measure how tall you want the bottom part to be and measure that as well before cutting the separate pieces. And that's it! To all of the sides, you'll have to add seam allowance when cutting the separate pieces, but more on that later. Then proceeded to cut the pieces considering a lot of seam allowance for the fabric tops and just about one centimeter on the bottoms. The other pieces left to cut are the strap that needs to be four times the width of your choosing, mine was about two centimeters and obviously long enough to go across your body. And of course the string that will be scrunching the top, which I made mine out of the same faux leather of the bottom of the back, about one centimeter wide, and just long enough to go around the back when fully open. And now, attaching the pieces together is super simple. I started by hemming the bottom raw right edge of the floral top part, folding it twice and then zigzag stitching it down. And also hemming the top, but this time just folding it over once before top stitching it down. Then I attached the fabric and the leather pieces together, hiding the hemmed edge under the leather, both facing right sides up, as shown on the video. As shown on the video. And if you're doing this plastic leather thingy on the bottom, please set your stitch length too long. Believe me, you'll thank me later. And of course, this goes with both sides of the back. Once you got everything as a single piece, it's time to make the fabric piece as into a mother fluffing bag. Fold the thing in half, right sides facing each other, and then sew along the sides. With the remaining fabric, you can hem the fabric pieces by folding them over twice. And finally, Join the sides and the bottom as shown on this clip right here. It is very hard to describe this movement, whatever thing, whatever, with words, but hopefully you'll get an idea and of course, sew it together with a straight stitch. At this point, you can flip the bag inside out and it should look like, well, like a bag. To finish the bucket portion of the bag, I decided to line mine with a black cheap fabric. I just got it the same template and sew it very quickly and make sure to not flip this portion so that the raw edges end up hitting in between the two layers. 
and we will flip the outside rim to the inside of the back, covering the lining edge and then we will top stitch it down. When doing this make sure to make this hem part as wide as the holes that you are going to thread the strap to crunch it up. This means at least one inch people. And to make the holes in question you can choose between adding bottom holes which I guess you can only make if your machine has a setting for it like mine does. Or you can use these two part rings that I have shown you how to use before on my wall decor video. Yes, I'm shamelessly self promoting. And the distribution is well up to you, cause I just wing it to be honest. But what I can tell you about the distribution of the holes is that you'll need at least 12 to 14 of them all around. If you make less, well, it will look awful. Jumping into the strap, you guessed it, I'll be folding the thing in twice for a nice strong finish. And yes, it is way easier to iron it down first. So fold it in half to find the middle, iron it down and then fold the sides into the middle, iron it down again and finally fold it in half to close it and finish either with a zigzag stitch or with a decorative stitch like I did down the center of the whole thing. The last part will be of course the bloody strap, which I made by sewing together two equal pieces of faux leather down the center again with a decorative stitch but you can choose to zigzag or any other white stitch on your machine. I attach the strap to the outside sides, I guess, of the back to my desired height with a zigzag stitch and then added the plastic string because, let's face it, faux leather is just another word for a plastic and that's it. The final result is something that is definitely my style and that only took me about 5 to 6 hours to make. So it's a nice personalized project that you can make with not too much time in advance and that in my opinion uses very little fabric. So thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll really appreciate if you leave a comment down below with what you would like to see me do next. I know I made a ton of woodwork videos here on my channel before and I'll be willing to make other woodwork stuff. But I also like to learn how to do everything. So if you have an idea on a piece of clothing or anything else that you would like to see me do a tutorial of, don't forget to let me know in the comments down below. Of course, give me a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe for more affordable DIYs. And I'll see you guys next time. Oh. Ah.